that song was written, and it just blessed me. There was a young pastor in the, in the nation of Wales who was pastoring a church, and he lived several miles from the church, and one day he was on his way home from the church, and, and it was a dark, cloudy day, and, and uh, he was trudging down the road and just giving God praise, and, and all of a sudden the sky opened up and the sun shone through, and he said, my God, how great that was. Amen. And he went on and wrote the song. And it's still relevant today. My God, how great that was. What a great God we serve. Hallelujah. I feel like a messenger this morning. I feel like God has given me a word, a message. and It's not new, but it's real. And uh, I, I believe it's one of those messages. I've had it happen many times. I'm sure Pastor has too. God will give you a word and then you hear that all over the country people were preaching that same word. A different way from a different venue. But I'll tell you, when God wants you to hear something, He wants you to hear it. And I want to tell you this morning, God wants us to hear a word this morning. Yes. Because we're in a place right now in this nation, in this city, in this church, in this world, where we need to shift gears and get on fire for God. Yes. I mean, we need more of God. Yes. We need to know how to live for God. Not just live and, and, and go along for God, but how to live for God. And I want to make a proclamation right here and now. I don't care what the country says or what the president says or the Congress says or the atheists say. This country is a Christian nation. We're not going to let that go. It's a Christian nation because God founded this nation upon the Christian principles, upon the Word of God. And because there are still millions of Christians in this nation who worship the Lord and will not listen to any other. Amen. And so I'm glad this morning to be a part of of this Christian nation. Oh, I know it's slipping. You know, I, I hear so much on the news that the phrase, it's a slippery slope. Oh, well, let me tell you, we started on a slippery slope. And this world is slipping out into eternity. And one of these days, uh, they got a rude awakening, I, I, I want to tell you. And so I come this morning and I, I, uh, I came with a good news alert. It's not a Fox News alert. It's a good news alert. Amen. Amen. Don't tell them what you hear when they, you know, a couple of years ago, something, I forget what it was, but that's when they started that phrase. And now they say it 20 times a day. Three or maybe 30 times a day. I've got a, a, a Fox News alert. Well, i got a good news alert this morning. And I want you to be alert to it because, you know, I was raised in a church where this word that I'm about to give you was preached more than Christmas or in just almost, you couldn't hear a sermon without someone saying, listen to me, Jesus is coming. That's the good news this morning. Jesus is coming. And for, for most of you here, that's exciting. Amen. That's good news. Now, there may be a few of you here. I don't know. Maybe all of you, that's good news. If that's good to you, say amen if that's good news. Amen. amen. If you don't know the Lord, if you're not sure that you're right with God, it may be a little bit fearful. Maybe it's not such good news. But the second part of the good news is that you can get right before you leave here and then make it good news. Amen. I had a fellow in my church years and years ago in Stockton who came to our church and, and he came out of a, a, a denomination that doesn't necessarily preach being born again, but he tried, he tried really hard, and, and I thought he had accepted the Lord, but every time, I don't, I guess back then I did a lot of preaching that Jesus is coming, I don't know, he said, Pastor, we know he's coming, do we have to hear it every week? I mean, because every time I preach it, he'd get scared, you know? And, well, if you're, if, you're, if you're scared this morning, uh, you're probably going to be more scared before you leave here because I'm going to tell you in every way that I can that Jesus is coming. 
and it's coming soon. Jesus is coming, and it's coming soon. And, and the message, you see, I believe in telling you what I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to tell you what I told you. And, and maybe by then you'll get it. The message I want you to hear is there's no fear in that for the children of God. As a matter of fact, we ought to be excited to hear that Jesus is coming. Because there are fearful things coming on this world. And I'm one of those that choose that to believe that God's going to get us out of here before it gets too bad. Yes. Amen. Yes. I mean, He's coming for us, and then He's coming back with us. Amen. Come on. Amen. And we're coming back with Him, but He's coming. You see, it's not several events. It's all one event. The coming of the Lord is everything from the rapture until everything is made new. Amen. 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 So I'm glad this morning to be uh, in, in joy and excitement about the coming of the Lord. Yeah. I, I tell you, more than I've ever been before, I feel such a, a, an important uh, message just to remind us. You see, we kind of put it on the back burner. We, we, we hear a lot of preaching, and if you go on Christian television, and I, I'm not down in anything, but I tell you, I've heard everything on there except that Jesus is coming. I mean, send me $100 and I'll give you a $100 miracle. How do you know there's not any $100 miracles? There's priceless miracles. And there's no price you can put on them. Don't you send no money to get no miracle. You see, he says, come and buy without price. Amen. And you hear all kinds of stories. Some of the preachers that used to preach the gospel are telling us that the gospel is not important anymore, that you don't have to be born again, just, just start living a good life. And that's not true. You hear all kinds of things in the world, but you hear very few anymore, except here in this church saying, Jesus is coming, you better get ready. Amen. Amen. I remember the song this morning, way back in my memory, and I don't know, whether I change the words or not, but but it was like people get ready. There, a train is coming. But I was singing this morning. People get ready. Jesus is coming. People get ready. Jesus is coming, and He's standing at the door. He's standing at the door. Now, I don't know how long He stands there. He didn't tell me. You know when He's coming. But I know he is coming. And I'm excited about it this morning. Turn your Bible with me to uh, uh, to Acts chapter 1, first of all. Uh, I got some scripture this morning. I just I want you to leave here with that on fresh on your mind, fresh on your heart. And, and, and I don't want to leave you with just that. I want you to understand there's a purpose for us having a, a a consciousness all the time that Jesus is coming. It's not so we can be afraid or because we can go somewhere out in the desert and twist our, put our fingers and wait till he gets here. It's not what it's about. It's not a fearful thing. It's a joyful thing. Amen. And, and, but there's a period of time. Now it could be an hour or so. Or it could be a year or so. It could be 20 years. It could be 30. It could be 100 years. I'll be shocked if it's that long, but but it could be. And so we need to know what we're to do in the meantime. We can't just stand on the street corner and say, repent for the king, you know, the Lord's coming. I've seen some people do that. It's better some, some of the message I've heard. But, but, but God may not have called us to do that, but God has called us to be a people of God that, that live in the expectancy that Jesus let me ask you this. What would you like to be doing if you, when Jesus comes? Huh? Oh, yeah, I think, think maybe you get a little lighter. <laughs> it didn't make more good to lose some weight than just to jump. But I'd rather be doing what I'm doing right now. Because that's what he called me to do. You see, I want to be found faithful. I want to be found worthy. And I know there's no worthiness in me, but I know that because of His blood, I stand worthy this morning. Amen. And so I'm not worried about it. 
I'm excited about it. Amen. Okay. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Father, we love you. We're so thankful for your love and your care and your mercy. We're thankful that you are an awesome God. And Lord, that you love us and you are great. How great thou art. Lord. We thank you for that. And we ask you to bless this time we have together. Lord, bless your word. Anoint your word and anoint me, O oh God, that I might preach your gospel with boldness. And I thank you for it, and I give you all the praise. And all of God's people said together, Amen. 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 Chapter, verse number 9. And when they had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went out, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into the heavens? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into the sky. Just like that young preacher way home from church, saw the heavens open and the sun shining. One of these days, the heavens are going to open and the sun is going to shine. You don't have to worry about missing it as long as your heart's right with God. You won't miss it. You don't have to get a news flash or an email or a Twitter. Somebody Twitters you and tells you that Jesus Oh, he's over here somewhere. The Bible says don't listen to him. Right? Amen. 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 If they say he's out here in the desert, don't listen. Because as the sun, or, or, or as the, the lightning flashes from the east to the west, so shall it be with the coming of the Lord. Amen. So he's coming, folks. You see, we have, we have special days. We celebrate his birth on Christmas Day. We celebrate his resurrection on Easter Day. We give thanks to him on Thanksgiving Day. The world has used these days and perverted them. Listen, if it wasn't for the money, there would be no Christmas holiday. There would be no Thanksgiving. There would be no Easter. We even have a day. You see, we're celebrating all things holy. The world is just celebrating the unholy God of mine. And now there's even a holiday for things that aren't holy. It's called Halloween. And you do whatever you want to with that. But I did with it a long time ago what I wanted to. I will not celebrate a day in any way, shape, or form that celebrates unholiness. Matter of fact, I would stand four square against it. Amen. I was in the doctor's office the other day, got my eyes and said, told me I okay. <laughs> said I wouldn't waste any money on glasses. That sound, I said that's pretty good for 72. <laughs> there was a guy in there, and he had this orange shirt, about the color of that young man's shirt. The only difference is it had stuff all over. The guy weighed about 350 pounds, so it was a big shirt. It was like a big canvas. <laughs> and I kept looking, trying to figure out what it was, and I finally realized it was the whole thing was hell. And in the middle here were some demons. And I thought, my God, how lost can you be? That's not just that young man, it's like the world. I mean, there's some. I know we're always looking for something to have a party. But celebrating devils ain't the time, ain't the place to do it. Amen. Come on. I'm not going to charge you any part for that part of the sermon. You just do whatever you want to with it. But I, 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 I wasn't even thinking about it the other day when I was talking to the Lord. I just remembered we have all these holidays, and, and now here comes one that is a holiday to celebrate unholiness. And unholy things. Oh, Pastor Jay, it's just a fun.
fun thing for the kids. That's the hook to draw them in. I didn't mean to preach on Halloween, but God told me to just tell you, watch what you're celebrating. See, what we really need is a day to celebrate Jesus is coming. Amen. Matter of fact, we have a day. It's called Sunday. Amen. Amen. And every day. But especially on Sunday, we ought to be celebrating that Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Get ready. He's coming. He's coming. And when He comes, all things unholy are going to be put away with. So that's why I don't want to be involved in that. I don't want to be at a Halloween party when Jesus got here. Come on now. Bye. 
I do iPhone every year <laughs> because it, it's no good anymore. It's outdated. Knowledge is exploding in the world right now. That's one of the signs. There's hundreds of signs. There's hundreds of reasons that we as children of God, those who read the Word of God, ought to know that Jesus is coming and He's even at the door. He's coming soon. But the, the prophets, and Peter wrote about it, and Paul wrote about it, and, and, and Jesus talked about it. And, you know, it's, it's all through the Word of God. It's one of the main themes of the Word of God. That not only was He going to come in Bethlehem, and not only was He going to live a sinless life and die on an old rugged cross and, and be bruised and beaten and shamed, and, and finally give up his life on the cross and, and then on the third day he raised from the grave. And a lot of times you think that's the end of the story, but that's not the end of the story. He appeared to his disciples and even as many as 500 people he appeared to. And then on that day of the scripture that I just read in the book of Acts, he was standing with all of his people and all of a sudden he was over. He ascended, the Bible says, to the right hand of the Father to make intercession for you and I. Do you know that he took his own blood and offered it on the mercy seat in heaven? It's there right now. It makes intercession for you and I all the time. When we miss it, it makes intercession. When we, when we make a mistake, it's there. And all we have to do is turn to the Lord be, you say, well, I don't know whether I did. Yes, you do. The Holy Ghost won't let you be if you do something He don't want you to do. And all you have to do is just turn to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. I, I, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to live that kind of life anymore. As you grow in the Lord, you just grow closer and, and you grow deeper in the end. And, and you, you, you just want to be so close to the Lord. We want more of you, Lord. We want more of you. That's why... So many of the songs nowadays said, we want more, Lord. We're not satisfied with what we've had. We want more. We want more. <coughs> but the rest of the story is that this same Jesus who, in a way, is coming back, he said to his apostles, don't be worried. Don't be afraid. If you believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, the main theme is if I go, I'll be coming. <coughs> He's going to set his feet on the earth again one day. It's going to be so good to be on his side. Amen. And it's going to be fearful and horrible to be on the other side. The Bible says in many places there will be tell you that to be afraid because if you know the Lord, there's nothing to be afraid about. Right. You can get excited. Amen. Right. I'm on God's side. The devil will say, well, how about that mistake you made? I don't care. I repent and I'm on God's side. Amen. 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 Well, you haven't always been so good. Well, I don't care. That don't matter. I'm on God's side. Amen. And he's on my side. And so when he comes, I'm standing with him and you can go to that 
you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For well, this they willfully forget. There's people that willfully forget. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't even want to know about it. They have willfully forgotten. And they're scoffers. It's, it's gotten to where, um, when I was a young man, um, <clears throat> there were many, many people who were pre-saved. I like to call them pre-saved. Gives a little hope maybe they're going to be saved today. There were a lot of pre-saved folk that were good, honest people and would have never spoken a, a bad word against the Lord or against his people. Now the whole world is speaking against the Lord. They're mocking us just like they mocked him. They're mocking you just like they mocked Jesus. They are calling you crazy, <clears throat> an idiot. You're, you're unlearned. You're, you're foolish. You're childish people for believing in a God that you can't see. It's, it's being taught in our schools. They can teach everything else. But if they teach that, if, if someone, a child, speaks it out in some school, they'll expel him from school. We, we worried about why they quit praying the prayer. They won't even let them talk about the Lord's Prayer. It's, 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 it's that slippery slope I was talking to you. We've done slipped off the slope. <laughs> Amen. But we as Christians can't afford to let that happen. We are being called. And you're going to hear it in this word. We're being called. What, what Peter says, knowing all these things that are going to happen, what manner of people ought we to be? Amen. And, and I tell you, the answer is people that, that are living a life that screams Jesus is coming. If your life is saying that you don't even have to say it with your mouth. Amen. If your life is saying Jesus is Lord, hey man, you don't have to wear a t-shirt. It's okay to wear one that says it, but you don't have to do it. If your life is screaming, Jesus is Lord and He's coming soon. Amen. Amen. And so, they're saying, where is the promise of His coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they are willfully forget, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water, by which the world that was um, existed, perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth were now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of our God and man. So you see, when we first started hearing about evolution, it was a slippery slope to get away from the fact that God created it all. And there's probably more people in the world right now that believe in evolution than there are that believe in we can't, we got to stop this thing. we got to stand up and say, don't forget, God created it all. Yeah. And it's in His hand, and He's going to do whatever He wants to do. Amen. Amen. I know we make plans, and the, the government does this. I don't even know about the government anymore. It's so, it, it's just so messed up that there's no right or wrong in it. It's all wrong. It's all messed up. It's because they've gotten away from God and they're depending on, well, we should try this thing and 
and, and this will help our country, and this will cause our economy to grow, and the others say, no, that that will ruin our country, and this is what will make our economy grow. The only thing that can bless America is God. Come on. God bless America. God bless America. And America needs to bless God. Amen. I'm telling you, it's a joy to come in this house on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, or whenever you get here, and just bless the Lord. Just bless the Lord. That means that our nation is still a nation under God, and it's still a godly and a Christian nation, no matter what anyone says. I, I was just shocked when I heard that our president went, and I'm not trying to be political, but he did go to a meeting one time and stood up and said, America is no longer a Christian nation. He said, I heard it. That's what he said. And that was a big slide down the slippery slope. And so you and I are going to have to start scotching the wheels a little bit and make sure that it stops sliding. You see, it's not up to the politicians, it's up to the church. When my people who are called by my name will pray and see my face and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins, and I'll heal their way. Amen. Amen. If you're waiting for some politician to turn around, <laughs> maybe if he thought that would get him elected, he might. That's what it's all about. So I'm not worried, I'm not scared because God's still in control. Amen. And when it gets to a certain point, and I'm going to read you the point in a moment, but when it gets to a certain point, He's going to say, come up here, children. Come on home. And then, you know, how many of you believe God can see what's going on on earth here in heaven? In heaven? Amen. We're going to be able to look and see. We're going to see this thing come to pass. Amen. Amen. Peter said it. Or they're willfully forget that God created it all. But beloved, do not forget this one thing. That with the Lord, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, or as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I don't know about you, but I'm wondering, Lord, what are you waiting for? Yeah. My God, why don't you just come and do it? And the Word says he, He's waiting because there's still some folks that He wants to save. Amen. Amen. And they may be your family, your friends, your neighbors. I said before, you know, I know there's when the last person that will be saved is saved, the Lord's going to come. Amen. 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 And so I've been looking for him. I want to witness to him and get him <laughs> saved. And let's go. <laughs> Amen. Are you the last person? I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. I went to Florida. I didn't find him there. I went to Georgia. I didn't find him there. came back home and haven't found him yet. But I'm still looking for him. You know, I hope I can win a thousand to the Lord, but I'd be glad to just, I, I'm happy when the Lord lets me be there when one person gives his heart to the Lord. Yes. Just one person. Thank you, Lord. And so, God has a plan, and it's still, it's still working. It's still, it's still in, in effect this morning. Paul said, Behold, in uh, 1551, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The first, uh, the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this incorruption must put on. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, 
death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, hell, or Hades, where is thy victory? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. That's the key word this morning. Steadfast. Be steadfast. Not up and down. Not in and out. Not fooling around with God. Be steadfast. And you, that can be interpreted in your own mind, but you're steadfast. I mean, what God calls you to do will be different than what He called me to do. But whatever it is, God's got His hand on you, and He wants you to be steadfast. The world's looking at you. They're trying to see if you're steadfast. Your children are watching you. They may be saying, I don't want anything to do with it. I, I don't want to be, I don't want to hear it, but they're still looking for you to be steadfast. Steadfast. That's the key word this morning. As we're in this place, knowing that Jesus could come any moment, I mean, what would you do if, if you knew the Lord was coming back today or tomorrow? What would you want to be doing? What, what would you change in your life to, to make sure that you were right where you wanted to be when you see Him face to face? What would you do? None of us really know. None of us really know. But I tell you, I've heard people say, well, I'm going to ask Him this and I'm going to ask Him that. The Bible says when, we, when that happens, we are going to know as we are known. I won't have to ask any questions. What I'm going to be doing is falling on my face <laughs> before him and praising him and saying, oh God, how great thou art. I don't think it was an accident when Randy was singing that song and he got to that second verse and he said, when Christ shall come, we shout of acclamation and takes me home, what joy will fill my soul. I want joy to fill your soul when you even think about it. And I want you to think about it alone. Oh, when Jesus comes and takes me home with shout of acclamation, what joy will fill my soul. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and, and then I'll sing, my God, how great thou art. We serve a great God this morning. Amen. We serve a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come to feed in the night, and when the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, fervent heat, both the earth and the world that are in will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be destroyed, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct? And that what manner of person are you to be with holy contact and godliness looking for the hastening the coming of the day of God because when the, when the heavens will be dis dissolved being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness would now, there's been a controversy. Some preachers just preach one thing, and some preach another. Some preachers preach the uh, catching away. And others just say, well, when he comes, he's just going to destroy everything. And, well, the answer is yes. <laughs> he's going to come, and he's going to take you and I out of here. We're going to go to heaven. We're going to be with the Lord, and there's going to be a thousand years. We're going to come back, and the Lord's going to set up his kingdom on this earth and reign here a thousand years. Why would he want to do that? Because he can. Yeah. Amen. I don't understand it all, but he can, and he said he's going to, and he's going to. Yeah. And then this thing is going. I just want to be with him through the whole thing. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And if you're looking for his coming, you see, he's coming back after people that are looking for yeah. his coming, yeah. not hiding from 
is coming. Amen. Amen. Oh, you, you tell me Jesus is coming back. I'm excited. I, I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. I mean, years ago, all we do is say, I'll fly away, I'll fly away. But we didn't, we didn't really want to fly away. We wanted to stay here. I, I remember Chuck, how many of you knew? Was it Chuck Smith? Uh, he used to be a country singer and lived down there around Escobar somewhere. Chester Smith. Turned into an evangelist. Heard it. Never got to hear it, but I would like to because I went to some of these dances when I was young. But him and this woman wrote a song, Just a Little Longer, Please Eat. Wait a little longer, a few more days to get our loved ones in. I understand that, son. But I'd rather pray, Lord, save them in a hurry so you don't have to wait. I mean, <laughs> Lord, come on and just save them. He can save them just like that. Amen. I'm just not asking you to put it off. I'm saying, Lord, come on. Even so, come on, Jesus. Amen. That's the last word in the book of Revelation. Even so, the spirit and the bride, that's you and I. How do you know you're the bride of Christ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spirit and the bride says together, even so, come on, Jesus. Go ahead and come. Go ahead and come. I'm ready. I'm telling you, it pays me. I'm so glad you're ready this morning. But if you're not ready, I don't want you to leave this house without being ready. And not just ready, okay, now I'm saved and I can go on my merry way and I don't have to worry about it. I'm talking about steadfast living for the Lord every day of your life. Don't even take a breath. Don't even spend a moment without the Lord. There's nothing out there for the children of God. Some of us I hope not all of us, but some of us have already been out there and seen there's nothing out there for the children of God. There's nothing. And so if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> if it looks like the devil and talks like the devil and acts like the devil, it's a devil. And so stay away from it. Amen. You want something to celebrate? Jesus. Yeah. Good news. Good news. Jesus. And he's coming really soon. <laughs> you know how, how we got started. <laughs> well, there used to be a holiday in the Catholic Church. Celebrated all Saints Day. And those who didn't believe and who were against everything holy decided, well, the day after we we'll just celebrate the opposite of all things. And it's turned into a, it's, do you know that it's more money is made for Halloween now than it's for Christmas? If you don't believe me, just go down where the video store used to be and look in the window and see what's there. Hideous thing. One little window, I was there looking at a job up on the roof with my grandson. I looked in the window there, there was a priest costume, a nun's costume. Mockery. Mockery. I, I'm telling you, I'm going to get you all delivered from that nonsense. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Hey, when I was a young preacher, we used to have Halloween parties in the church. I didn't know any better. Last year, took about Pastor Jacob to a Halloween party. <laughs> I went to the, and there was a new young lady in our church, in our church, about 13, 14 years old. She didn't know me. She came to church with the devil suit on, tail and all. I said, "There's something wrong with this picture." Amen. So we quit. We repented of it. We haven't done it since. I'm going to quit preaching. Quit meddling. But I believe it. It's true. We're about to receive Holy Communion this morning. So I'd like you to.
to stand with me as the ushers come. <clears throat> and before we do, I want to know if you're ready to receive Holy Communion. I want to know if you know the Lord. If you don't know the Lord this morning, I want to give you an opportunity before you take that juice in your hand. I'm not going to tell you how bad it is if you do or anything. That's between you and God. But I'm going to tell you that you can get right with God right now. If you don't know the Lord, I want you to know the Lord today. Is there anybody in the house this morning? You don't know the Lord. And you want to be ready. You want to get excited when you hear that Jesus is coming back. You want to be able to receive Holy Communion and feel like it's a holy thing, not just a religious thing. If you're this morning and you don't know the Lord and you'd like to know the Lord, please raise your hand. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you this morning. My heart breaks for those who don't know the Lord in this last day. It's such a dangerous time to, to be away from God because if you're away from God, the devil will draw you further away from God than you ever wanted to go. He'll take you places where you never intended to go. He'll, he'll keep you there longer than you ever intended to stay. And he'll cause you to do things you would never have dreamed that you would do. So if you don't know the Lord, raise your hand right now. I want to pray for you. If you do know the Lord, and, and listen to me, people that know the Lord are not bashful. There's, we're going to have to stand up before this world and proclaim you know the Lord. Amen. And so if you're a Christian this morning, you're, you're ready to go, and you know if Jesus came today, you'd be right there with him. I want you to raise your hand real high. Just raise your hand real high and say, Pastor, I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed that I'm a Christian. I'm going to stand up for the Lord, and I'm going to proclaim the gospel to everyone I get a chance. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead, brother. Father, we just thank you for these elements that have been prepared, and we pray your blessing be upon them as they are distributed to this audience. We ask your blessing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and serve the congregation. I believe everyone in this house is a 